the history of music in Balnakil. If the walls of any house resound with the strains of the pipe and the hob, or the maid amongst the roses, it's surely those of Carro Balnakil. For it was here in 1928 that the celebrated Old Balnakil Band was formed. At the time, Miss Anna Rafferty lived in Carrow House, and it was here over 90 years ago that the late Father Larkin, parish priest, pushed into practice his boyish ambitions when he brought a group of musicians together and formed the Balnakil Cayley Bands, or the Balnakil Traditional Players, their original name. From this humble beginning, they went on to achieve success, not alone in Ireland, but in England, where the fame of their music had gone before them in the numerous recordings they made. The founder members were Miss Anna Rafferty, late of Rathgar Dublin, Stephen Maloney, Tommy Whelan, Tommy White, and Jerry Maloney. Those five members traveled the length and breadth of the land and across the Irish Sea without change of personnel. Throughout the winter of 1928-29, the band practiced and perfected itself, played at local functions, and in a short time, the name Ban Nikhil became synonymous with Cayley music. Through the invitation of a lady piper, the band was selected to play at Fish Aluin, sponsored by the military station there, and where the custom barracks belt was annually danced for. As was customary in those days, the band that played for the dancing also played at the Cayley afterwards. And it was here that the Balnakil band got his first major break. Seamus Clandillon, first director of 2RN, as Radio Erin was then known, was a great authority on folk music and engaged the band to make a live broadcast on November the 1st, 1929. The selection was broken down into two sections, time for 730 and 1030. Incidentally, the Balladrine singers who were waiting for their own broadcast heard the band through and cheered as they finished their recital. After this special broadcast, the band met the members of the Cheer and Oak Trio, Leo Rousam, Niels Cronin of Cork and Seamus O'Mahony, who were practicing for their own broadcast and to get together at the hotel was arranged for the following night. In July 1930, Parliament of London had the band make two records, consisting of The Pipe and the Hub, The Old Bush Reel, The Queen of the Rushes, and The Copperplate Reel. Sales from these records surpassed all expectations. And on the 17th of November 1931, the whole band was invited by Parlophone to London to make six double-sided records. Between 1931 and 34, they continued to fulfill local engagements, Kaleha, Feshina and concerts in places like Ballinasloe, Mount Mountbellu, Clifton, Spittle College, Athlone, Mount Shannon, Laban, Kilinena and Limerick. By then, other Cayley bands like the Austin Slopes and the Austin Stack were springing up and traditional music was enjoying a new lease of life. <laughs> January 1934, after a broadcast in Radio Erden, the members were guests of honour of the Lord Mayor of Dublin, Alfie Byrne. Incidentally, the Lady Mayoress, Mrs Byrne, a cousin of the Hagney family of Carrochrin, has spent some seasons there as a child and was a classmate of Father Larkin at Denairy National School. In 1938, a second trip to London took place, this time with two new members, Aggie White and Kevin Maloney. On St. Patrick's Night, they played in the Olympia Theatre Earl's Court 
and on their return to Dublin, they recorded further Eileen Curran and Sandmount Reels. Another highlight for the band's career was their role as guests of honour at the coming-of-age party of Lord Killan at his residence outside Spittle a few weeks before the outbreak of the Second World War. In 1941-42, the Banlachil Kelly Band had reached international fame and sales from their records amounted to tens of thousands. For 14 years they had worked together, building up a reputation which the passing years could not tarnish. In 1942, when travelling became difficult, the old Balnakeel band had reached a well-earned rest. When these original members retired from public life, they passed on their music to their sons and daughters. And it was this new combination of Aggie and Bradley White, Eddie Maloney, Jack Cotton, Martin Grace, Tom Rourke, and Jim Hogan that was chosen in 1951 by American folklorist Alan Lomax in collaboration with James Ennis to play the background music for a ballad opera, Story of Troy written by him for production on BBC. 